is a Rubik's Cube? How long is one side? Three. Three square. Three of whatever that length is, right? So would you agree that we would call it three units because of how it's broken up? What is the area of one of the sides? None. How did you figure that out? Three times three. Three times three or three squared. What is the volume? How many, if you dropped it and all the little squares were able to separate, how many little squares would there be, or how many little cubes would there be in total? 27. 27 of them, which happens to be 3 times 2 times 3. Now, volume formula is length times width times height. That's on your formula sheet when you did our first unit. Oh, that reminds me. Tomorrow, on your test, tomorrow on your test, it is all trigonometry, and I put, except I put one or two, let's see if I put one or two, this is your test. I put on one review question. You know those questions that have, this reminded me of it that I give you a large number of, say, inches. Four pages, yeah. Four pages, yeah. And that's all calculated. Like, Two sides, two pages. Okay. If I gave you 167 inches, could you tell me how many yards, feet, and inches it was, because I have, I have one of those review no on your test, and that's like that one. Wait, so, did we get our review page? Well, that's like last unit, right? Yeah, from last unit, there's one question. Five, so you have to, to figure. Get yards, then right? to get feet, you get your formula sheet? Yeah, the yeah, formula sheet will still be on there. So, just a reminder that I still expect you to know how to do that. Hey, so, um, I'm curious, this is off topic, but I'm curious because they're trying to figure out what your final exam is going to look like, okay? And um, just thinking about some possibilities. Possibility one would be to have three mini exams during the year. So once we finish this, once we finish this unit, we will have done three units, and then you would do an exam on your first three units. Okay, yeah. that's fine. And that's then fine. Right. 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 another three units and an exam, and then your last two units and an exam. So you have an exam on smaller parts. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, another option is at the end of the year just having a shorter exam, which happens one day non-calculator, one day calculator. Yeah. At the end of the year, on everything. Maybe we should do the first half. Yeah. You like the, the mini three? Yeah, because you're not going to remember the first yeah. unit of the year that well. Yeah, but well. how short is it? Uh, how long is an exam? How long is a normal exam in the past here for grade ten math would be two to two and a half hours. How many pages? Yeah, that's what. How many pages would it be? Well, there was like ten. I mean, there were like ten to fifteen pages. Whoa. Okay, so what would a short Mini exam for sure. Like a third of that, five pages. Oh, then let's do that. So very last exam, five and five. five. Yeah, you'd have five and five on each day. Because like when you're done with the unit, I just want to be done. But well, you need to know it for next year. Five sides or Well, yeah, but you, you'll let remember the little Five pages. Okay, so ten sides. Total. Sorry, five sides. Oh. Yeah, just like your like your test tomorrow is four sides. Oh, and so like, yeah, that's that, yeah. Like three minis, for sure. You like three minis? Okay. Let's get three minis in. It's not, it's like, the problem is, is we have no, we, we don't know what to call them. Then we can do review. Okay. Sorry, got off topic there. Back to definitions. A perfect square. These numbers are called perfect squares. Four. Four, 16, 25, 
How far do you, do you know the next one? <laughs> 169, 13 times 13. Does anybody know 14? So those are all perfect squares, and they're perfect squares because they make, if this is a square, and you had an area of 144, you know that the side lengths are 12 and 12, so the word 144 comes from the shape of a square, I mean not the word, but the word perfect square for these numbers comes because you can make a square with that area with the sides being nice numbers. Okay? We would say that 7 is not a perfect square because if you had an area of 7, the side lengths wouldn't be whole numbers. They would be square root of 7 and square root of 7, but those are nice numbers, so that would not be a perfect square. Okay? Next definition, a square root. Well, a square root, we know what it looks like. Like, this is the square root of 7. Now, what it means is that if you had a square with an area of 7, one of its sides, in fact, both of its sides, or all of its sides, would be the square root of 7. So that a connection between square roots and what they are and what they mean with regards to a square. As we use these words, square, it connects to a square. Perfect cube, well, that is, if you knew the volume of a cube, this would be its side length. But 8 is a perfect cube because it's 2 times 2 times 2. Next one is missing. This is 4 times 4 times 4. Which number is missing? 3 times 3 times 3. Which is? 27. 5 times 5 times 5. Does anybody know what 6 times 6 times 6 is? Is it supposed to be missing? No, it's not supposed to be missing. It should be missing. Wait, 27 is 3 times 3, which is? 9 times 3. 207. 207. 207 7 times 7 times 7, 8 times 8 times 8 is 512, and 9 times 9 times 9 is 12 times 12 times 9. Okay, so this is that. Cube root. So we write a cube root like this, And the cube root of 27 is equal to 3 because if you had your Rubik's cube with side lengths of 3, the volume would be 27. If this is centimeters, then we would write centimeters cubed. Because 3 times 3 times 3 would be the volume, so cube rooting finds you the side length of a cube. So if I told you, and you'd have to take out your calculator, oh, and you should do this right now. If I give you a cube with not, not a nice number for volume, the volume is equal to 100 
What is the side length? Well, the side length would equal the cube root of 100. So we do that on your calculator. Where is it? Yes, where is it? Under the square. Under the square. You have to find it. There's cube root of 100 on this one. 4.64. So you need to find it on your calculator. On that one, you hit the math button. Your calculator died. Then you better wow. get a new one. Do you have like a little key room? No? Okay, so there's our cube root button. We're going to find cube roots without our calculator. Like big numbers. Like 1,296 without a calculator. We can use our prime factors again. 1,296, can you see you can divide that by 2? What would you be left with? 648. Can you divide that by 2? What would you be left with? 324. 324, can you divide that by 2? Right. Divide that by two. Eighty-one. Nine? No, it's eighty-one. Eighty-one. Nine times nine. Right? Which is nine times nine? Which is three. How do you really know what it's like multiplying by? Mental math. Knowing your times table. Okay, so we, as a result of this, we know that 1296 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 2, 2. Can you put it into two of them that are the same? Because we are wanting to find, look at the question originally, the square root of... 1296. Well, if I put a 2 in this one, I'd have to put a 2 in this one. Can I break up the 2s evenly? So it's, two, so it's two, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. What numbers would be in here? If you multiply them out, 36. So that tells us that 1296 is 36 times 36. So, the square root of 1296 is equal to 36, without a calculator. So it's, it's a square root. square root. So a square root, when you write a square root, I do like a little tiny thing here. There's no number written, but a cube root would have a little 3 there. A fourth root would have a little 4, and so on. So the strategy we just used is written here. Write as a product of its prime factors, and then if you wanted a square root, you have to arrange it into two equal roots. Okay? Could you do this with cube roots? Could this strategy work with cube roots? Not for this number, but if you were trying this strategy, can you see that you could do it and then have to make three equal roots? There it is. If you had that number, you could That one doesn't because it wouldn't work out nicely. That's a good point. So on this one, the question is, could we do the cube root of 1296? No, because can you see if you tried to make it in three equal ones, the numbers wouldn't work out evenly in those three brackets? But if we had something like 1728, 
start off with 72 and 28. Can you see that it can divide by 2? 2 and? 864. 864. And 2 and? 432. 432. Just divide it in half. Divide it in half in your head. Okay, so 200 in half. Because you're in your head. Yeah. <laughs> you can divide the thousand in half, divide 700 in half, divide 20 in half, divide 2 in half. So when I'm dividing by 2, I actually do, because dividing by 2 is finding two things that add together to make that. So first of all, I would look at the 17, and I know that it has to be 800 and 800, because that makes 1,600, so that would tell me it needs to be an 8. It can't be a 9. If it was in the 900s, it would go 1,800 when you add it to each one. So dividing by 2, the first thing I'd look at is the 7, and I know, oh, it has to be 800 and 800. Then I would still have a 2 here, but I still have 100 left. So then I look at 120. What plus what makes 120? 60 and 60. And then I have my 8, 4 plus 4. Now when I divide 800 by 2, 400 plus 400 makes 800. 30 plus 30 makes 60. 2 plus 2 makes 4. But it's good just practicing cutting things in half, right? If I cut 216 in half, can you see that it would be 108? Correct. And 108. 54. 54. Oh my goodness, we've got lots of twos on this one. And 54 would be 27. And maybe at 27, I even split it up and say, because I know it's going to be 3 times 3 times 3. And now I can write it out. How many twos do I have? Let's circle them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six twos. And three threes. If I want to find the cube root, I'd have to break this up into three equal groups. How many twos in each group? So then I have six of them. How many threes in each group? One. What does this equal? And so the cube root of seventeen twenty eight is equal to. And this number reminded me of a story. Okay. There is a uh, famous story of a mathematician from India whose name I probably can't pronounce correctly, Ramuli Jam, something like that. There's a movie, and it's actually a really, really good, like usually a, oh, a movie about a mathematician. <laughs> right? No, but it's actually a really, really good movie. I'll find it. You guys can look it up. Um, so this mathematician from India was just, he was poor. He just found books on his own and learned math on his own. And... He was so good at the math that he would send his information off to universities in England at the time saying, hey, I would like to study more math. Could, you, could I come? This is some of the stuff I've been working on. And he sent it off to, it eventually got to a professor in England who looked at his stuff and said, this is crazy what this guy is doing, having learned it all on his own. So they decided to... Um, I think it's called The Man Who Knew Infinity. Okay. Well, someone can look that up. Is that an actual movie? Yes. Yeah. Anyways, so he gets into onto a boat and is able to travel to England, and there and he meets up with a famous English mathematician, 
His name is Thomas Hardy. What's his name? Two days in Newton. The man who knew infinity. What's the name of the mathematician with the boat? Ramanaja. Ramanujan. Anyways, so he arrives to meet this famous mathematician from England. This is where I remember this story from. And the taxi he arrived in had this number as a taxi. And the English mathematician said, it's nice to meet you. It's too bad that the number of your, because they're mathematicians, because they're geeks, right? The English mathematician says, it's too bad that the first number that we meet with, your taxi number, 1729, isn't that interesting. And Ramanujan said, oh, but it is interesting. Because this is the first number that you can write as the sum of two different sets of cubes. 1229 is 12 cubed plus 1 cubed. It's also 10 cubed plus 9 cubed. And it is the first number that you can do that. And then, then the English mathematician went, hmm, this guy's pretty impressive. Anyway, the man who knew infinity, very interesting, brilliant mathematician, arrives to England, sad story in the end, but I won't ruin the point. He died. Oh, and he almost died in death. It's a long time. But yeah, people die. Maybe he died. Maybe that's why he died. But you can watch it. Good movie. Right? There have been a couple of good math movies. Um, so, oh, Man in Infinity. I would say, uh, very good math movie. Uh, very good math movie. Okay, this one has lots of swears in it, but that was a good whale hunting. Very good math movie. Another. How are these even math movies? Like, what makes it like? Well, the main character. Oh, but he's the one that one. Beautiful Mind. Yeah. That one, I think, well, I won think an mind. Oscar. Oh, he's not. But. Okay, yeah, those are some. If you're Netflixed out and you're, you have access to movies, those would be three good movies centered around mathematics. We watched this one, and he was like, it's like he had. So, if you want to determine the side length of a square with an area of 144x squared y is 6, what you're really looking at is, can you find the square root of 144x squared equal to 6? Or, to help you think of that, you're trying to write 144x squared y to the 6 as two things that are identical. What's the answer going to be? Is there a number that you could put into both of those so the numbers work out perfectly with 144? 12 and 12. Is there, could you break up the x's? Because the answer needs two x's. You would need 1x and 1x. Could you break up the y's? Three y's here and three y's there. So the answer to the side length of the square, the square root of this is 12x, y here. Like we should have a field trip to just watch movies. Yeah, just go to the math museum. The math museum. There's got to be a math museum somewhere, right? Went on a math trip once with the school. Where? To Minneapolis. What? To go to the science museum and ride roller coasters. What? 
Were you like measuring the surface area of the roller coaster? I'd actually like to measure the angle of yeah. how fast the, the, the angle of rotation on the angle of uh, compression of the roller coaster. I think we could all find that out. There you go. Okay. So I'm gonna put a little more space. The roller coasters is more physics. There's a possibly a physics sometimes they've got to a roller coaster yeah. amusement yeah. park. So if you want to find the side length of a cube with that volume, okay, you've got your volume formula, which would be the side times the side times the side, which is side cubed, and you would know that the volume is this, does it make sense that the opposite of cubing would be Square cube rooting? No. Now, if we want to find the cube root of something, what we're actually trying to find, I'll write it off to the side here, is could you make three sets of brackets and have the same numbers in each one perfectly? What number would make 125? Five times five times five. How many x's would be in each set of the brackets to give you an x to the nine? Three. There'd have to be x3 here, x3 here, and x3 here. And how many y's would have to be in each bracket to give you y cubed? One. One y here, one y here, one y here. So, the cube root of 125x to the 9y cubed would be 5x cubed y. Boom. So if you're doing this mental math, can you see that that list of perfect squares and perfect cubes is going to be important at the beginning? Because you'd have to recognize, oh, 125 is 5 cubed, 27 is 3 cubed, and so on. Wait, isn't it today? No. Today. It's today. It's today. Yeah, that's why um we were going to have a calculator. probably figure out the volume of the cake. It's a busy day, bro. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we could. That surface area. Right? Surface area. You could make, oh, make it a perfect cube. Um, you see all this math? All this math. And, and, yeah, great, uh, and great cake. A cube has a volume of 4,913 cubic inches. What is the surface area? Oh my goodness. So, this is a question that connects this unit to our first unit. In this question, you have a volume of a cube. So you have a formula that volume of a cube would be the side times the side times the side, which is a side cubed. The surface area of a cube, remember how to find surface area? Area times. It's the area of all the sides added up. Okay? Can you see that if you had a cube, oh, here's one. Here's a cube. How many sides does a cube have? Six. Six. And what are the shapes of every side of the cube? Squares. Six squares. What is the formula for a square? It would be side squared. 
So we want to find the surface area. What do we need to find the surface area? Side. We need the side. Do we know the side? No. no. What do we know? We know the volume. So the volume, we can plug in here, 49.13, is going to equal the side cubed. Could we find the side? Yes. yes. But we would need to be able to cube root this. Now, if this was a calculator question, this would be a calculator. if this was a calculator question, what would you do? You put in your calculator, put in your calculator the cube root of 49.13. And it works out to be what? Try it on your calculator. Because if this is a calculator question and you don't know how to use your calculator, you're going to be in trouble. 17. This one would be a hard one to do with prime factorization. You would need you would need a calculator to do the prime factorization. So if you need the calculator to do the prime factorization, then you may as well just do the cube root on your calculator right away. So now, can I find the surface area? Ooh, this looks like fun though, huh? Right? We we learned already. Does anyone remember what 17 squared was? 289? Yeah. Right. So now 289 times 6. Oh, I'm going to show you something fun. 289 times 6. Check this out. 6 times 289. What's 6 times 2? 12. What's 6 times 8? 18. What's 6 times 8? 48. 48. What's 6 times 9? 54. Okay, do you see how I wrote the numbers kind of funny? Yeah. It's like I wrote them on a diagonal. 4, 13, and the 1, 7, 1. 1, 7, 3, 4. Yeah. Is that what 6 times 289 is? Mm. Anybody have a calculator check? Uh, have you told your story? I might have. Did I show you this already? No. no. Maybe it's what did last you year. So I did. I did 6 times 2, that's 12. Mm -hmm. 6 times 8 is 48. Mm -hmm. 6 mm -hmm. times 9 is 54. And then I made diagonals and I just added up what's in the diagonal. 4 plus 0 is 4. 5 plus 8 is 13. I carried the 1. 2 plus 4 is 6. Plus the 1 is 7. And 1. Makes multiplying big numbers really quick and easy. Okay. surface area is 1734. Is there units in this question? Yeah, inch. Yeah. Cubic inches. So this would be 1734 square inches. Inches squared. I guess you could write it this way. It would probably be the most typical way of writing that final answer. Oh. I like the number 17. So we get, let's look back at this whole question, because these are ones that students normally find harder, because you are used to questions that you start with something, end with something. But you want to end with surface area, but there's nothing in this to start with. So we have to do something in between. And so this is a problem solving strategy that you're going to start to develop in math. You're like, well, Given the information that I have, is there anything I could find, right? And given the volume, I could find the side length. You ask yourself, is finding the side length helpful? In this case, the answer is yes. If I have the side length, then I can find the surface area. So that's how we would problem solve in this, okay? In real life situations, your problem solving is a lot more difficult. Because often there's a lot of things that you can figure out that aren't helpful, right? I'm trying to solve this information. Could I find out Aiden's middle name if I asked him? Yes. Would that help me? No. 
So it's not a useful, like, often there's lots of things you can figure out that may not help you. And that's what makes problem solving more difficult in real life. Because you have to determine what are the things that would help you. To figure out what the things are that would help you, sometimes you work backwards. For example, I want to find the surface area. I need the side length. Oh, so I'm going to have to work backwards and say, is there anywhere else I could find the side length? That is a strategy that you could use as well. Okay, we do have 15 minutes left. I'm going to, before I get you started on the uh, um, homework, I'm going to give you a couple puzzles. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to give you something like, I'll start off with an easy puzzle. Okay, I'm going to give you, um, let's do, fill in the blanks. What would be in there? Possibilities? Looks like I heard someone say one. 21. 21 and? Um, three. Three. Good. Any Seven. other possibilities? Seven and nine. Seven and nine. Excellent. Good. Um, Let's do a little bit harder. Oh, seven times nine is sixty-three. What? Just another one. Okay. I'll give you another one. The number that was in here. Oh, easy, right? So easy. Okay. Um, how about You have to check it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 6x plus 12. Yeah. Okay. Um, X and Y. X and Y. Okay. I'll give you a harder one. Go with it. You had it too many. Three. 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 Three.
Seven times three is twenty-one. There is there is a hint that this last one, this last one right there, makes those two last ones together. Because there's no x sign. There's no x sign. This one's going to be trickier. Do you notice that the first one here matches with the first ones here? Yeah, so you have to find an x squared, right? Right, which is x times x. x squared. It has to, it, here's the first one. 2x squared. It's 3x squared. So what could give you 3x squared? 1x. 1x and 1x times 2x would give you 2x squared. 1x times 1x doesn't x give you 1x squared. 1x times 3x would give me 3x squared. So now the question for you is does the 3x go here and the x here, or does the x go here and the 3x there? Only one will work. Outside and your inside, 3x plus 2x makes 5x. You did it the other way with the 3x here. Your outside would be 1x and 6x, and then it would be 7x. So, interestingly, let's do that one. If you had 3x squared plus 7x plus 2, it would be x plus 2, 3x plus 1. What are we going to do in this unit? What are we going to do in this unit? I'm going to give you one like this, x squared plus 8x plus 12, and you have to tell me what goes in there. This is what we're doing in this unit. Yeah. What, what's going to go in there? Can you work it out? This is the next level of puzzle. So you know there's going to be x in the first one, yeah. and the whole number in the last one. X and X, good. That has to be there. And then the eight. And the I'm thinking like a four, because there's a multiple of eight. Eight and twelve. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is the hint. There's your first one. There's your last one. Eight is exactly four, right? X plus four something has times X plus eight. Why? But because if I put yeah, four and eight, I don't get twelve. I get thirty-two. That's good guess. I like three and four. Three and four. If I did three and four, no, then it doesn't work together. Then it doesn't work That's why I'm the So this is nice. I like this idea. Three and four, because that makes twelve. No. But does the does the eight work? No. It's close, but it's not three and four. You would say. Yeah, two and three. Because two and six no, that work. Wouldn't work. Two and six makes twelve. Yeah. And eight is. And 8x, there it is. Yeah, true, true. Nice. Okay, I'll give you another one. Um,
probably tell me what the first ones have to be. If you're on your phone doing something else and not thinking about this, this will oh hinder you. Negative seven and two. Negative seven and two. Does that make minus fourteen? I put that that way because you put one. And then I would, if I multiply this out, I'd have a two x minus seven x minus five x. All right, I'll do another. I'll do a. Ooh, I'll do another minus one here. Let's say minus 12x over the plus one here. So x and x is going to cancel out. Good, good, good. 4a. Negative 4a. Negative 4 and plus 8? Yeah, negative 4 plus 8. But then if I multiply these ones, I get negative 32. Um. Oh, so you have negative 4, negative 8. Oh, good job. Because now I get plus 32, but then I have negative 4x. If I multiply it out, I get negative 8x and negative 4x. Yeah. Negative 12x. All right. I, mean, I got to keep hiding. No, x and x doesn't give you two x squared. No, wait, no. But you can figure it out. What is it going to be? It's going to be a number than x. No, wait. It's going to be a 2x yeah. two two X X and an x. x. What? Does From that the make top sense? One. Because that would be, if I multiply these first ones, that would give me 2x squared. Okay? Good? So then 3 and 2? 3 and 2? Well, 3 times 2 gives no. me 6. No. Yeah. No, I mean, that's not just whole thing. No, it's got to be whole numbers. <laughs> it has to be a minus for every one of them, so it has to be minus minus negative. Just to get it. Oh, so it's good. Just to get it. Oh, that's great. So it'd be 2 and 3? 2 and 3 makes 6. 2 yeah. times 3 makes 6. You need these. You need these last ones to make 5. How do you multiply to get 5? 2 and 5. 1 and 5. So now you have the options. Is and why is it different if I put one and five or five and one? Do you understand that that will be different in this example where it wasn't didn't matter in the last one? You can mix them up. Why does it matter in this one? One will make if I put the one and five, then my outside's ten and one. Does ten and one ever make seven? No. But if I put but if I put five here and one here, then I've got two and five. Does that ever make seven? Would they be both plus or both minus? Both plus. Both plus to make plus 7. I'll give you another one like that. Let's go 5x squared plus 6. Oh my goodness. Is there something in the middle? I'll turn it in this way. I don't know. This is really... What, what has to be the first one? 5x, 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 5x
15 and 2 could make 13. So that might be a possibility. I, I think this, this one's really easy. Right? Then one would have to be negative and one would have to be positive, which is going to give us a problem. Because this both one's positive. positive. They're both positive. So what happens if you do 3 and 2 this way? 10. Three. Does it work? Yeah. Woo! It kind of hurts my brain. That, well, it's what we're supposed to do. A little bit of brain hurt. Right. Is this like what we're doing? Like, like this is what we're going to be doing next. It's called factoring. Factoring in algebra is like dividing and multiplying regular numbers. How hard would it be for you to multiply this out? You're probably pretty good at that already. That's from grade 9. But starting with the answer and breaking it up is like, if I asked you, the very first question we did was 63. If I said 7 times 9, hopefully your times table is good enough that you'd say, I know that's 63. But when I say 63, you'd be like, oh, it could be 7 times 9. It could be 21 times 3. It could be 63 times 1. There's more than one way to break it up, and it's hard to figure it out. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be getting the answer and trying to break it up. What was it originally? So if I give you an easy one, 3x plus 9, and I said it was two things originally, what could those two things be? Wow. What, would, what, would, what could have been there originally if the answer was 3x plus 9? Going back to the simpler one. This is an easier one, yeah? X and 3. No, I got 3 and 3. Nice. And so what we're going to do is we're going to connect this to what we've been doing. What is... What is the common factor between 3 and 9? Three. A 3. And then you're left with x plus 9. So if I gave you something with a bigger common factor, if I gave you something like um, 8x plus 20, what's in common between 8 and 20? What's the greatest common factor? A 4. <laughs> what would be left if you pulled a 4 out of this one? 2x? Wait, no. 2x? Oh, I and what would be left if you pulled a 4 out of the top? Very cool. Oh, 